Rodokies, Andy Lippy here, back with another OBS tutorial, and this is a plugin that's been out for some time. This is the Move Transition plugin that we use for pretty much everything, but there are there are features that you guys probably don't use, and you really need to start using. As you've seen from the example right here, I'm actually making a transition, and there's different elements disappearing off screen in different ways so they they go in their opposite way so you got my top bar leaving the the top way and then the bottom bar leaving the bottom way and then coming back in when i transition back to this scene and that is using the transition override filter so i'm going to run through how i got that to work and how that can save so much headache in your obs and keep everything a little bit cleaner rather than making manual movements for absolutely everything so let's just take a deep dive into this one it's going to be quite dry but the more you use it the more you'll understand it and you'll love it. You'll honestly love it. I need to use it more. You need to use it more. Let's just get on with it. Put your rock over the stone. Let's go. Right, so first things first, you've probably seen my other videos. If not, this is the plugin that we're going to be using. This is the Move Transition plugin from Exceldro. Please leave it a rating. It is the best plugin. If you're not already using it, get it installed. Like, are you even a streamer if you're not using this? Do you know what I'm saying? Just get it downloaded just here in the top right, and you can choose the Windows installer. I'd recommend using that one. So download that and just run through the EXE file, and that'll install everything, and it'll put it all in the correct places. Any issues, you can follow my other tutorials on how to install this plugin plugin i've been through it a million times so i don't want to waste your time going through it again so once you've got it all installed you can open up obs and i'm using a virtual camera now so you've got my camera feed inside of obs at the same time as a different obs yes right now i'm running three different versions of obs yeah that, that'll become apparent in a little while why i'm doing that so let's fiddle about with it so as you know you can create a scene transition you can add a move uh, transition just here so we're gonna add a move transition to start with and i'll just call it move for now and press ok so there's so many kind of things that you can do with move transition so it's uh <laughs> it's just it looks pretty daunting but the more you use it the more you'll start understanding so um this is just setting up the match so if basically they they contain the same source name they're going to be classed as a match source uh, which means that you, you'll be able to set up different kind of thing, uh, different events to happen if something's matched or something's disappearing or something's appearing. So you can change these to get your desired effect and match sources up easier. Or you can use the, the thing that we're going to go into a little bit later on. Um, the switch point, again, this is all your personal preference. The matched items is what we spoke about. If so, if you're changing scene and your items match, how do you want them to move? Because say if you've got your webcam in the middle and then it's down in the bottom right, how do you want that to transition? What's the easing function? Do you want it to ease? Uh, is it going to use a fade transition at the same time? You can set all these up. Same for appearing items. So if something's not on the previous scene, but it's on the, the newer scene, then what do you want that to do? Do you want it to fade in? Do you want it to move in? Where do you want it to move in from? So you see what I'm saying, how that's going to work. And it's the same for disappearing items. Okay, so I'm just going to press OK on that. We can edit that at any point by going to the cogwheel on the right hand side. I don't know why I've got this bar so big in this version of OBS, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to add in a couple of sources first. So I'm going to do a text source. We'll call it text GDI. This is text. Uh, and we're going to just quickly select a font because it's the, the best font out there just because it keeps winding people up. So there we go. Look at that. Uh, so we've got some text in the middle of the screen just there. So we're going to create another scene as well. So I'll call this my gaming scene as well. So we'll create that new scene. So as you can see, using the move transition, everything's disappearing. That is what it's set up to as default. And if it's appearing, it'll come in this way. So if I now press the cogwheel on the um, properties just here, we can change all these settings just here. So as we had the just chatting scene and the gaming scene, the gaming scene's got nothing on it at all. These sources are going to disappear. So if I change how this works, so if I turn zoom off, for instance, just unchecking that box just there, and I change, you'll see that everything moves, but it's not zooming in as it disappears. So it moves across like so. They move to the right-hand side. 
So I can change that if I change rather than center right for disappearing. I can change this to center if I want to, non uh, to the top. So if I change that to top now, move this out of the way and make it appear, oh, make it appear and then press it to disappear, it'll disappear to the top of the screen like so. So that's how you can get that to kind of happen. I can add in a fade as well. So now it'll fade out whilst going to the top. Then you see it fades out a nice really simple this is what you've been using your move transitions for but i'm going to show you how to take it next level so i'm going to put all these on none for now okay so nothing's going to happen at all when any of this happens look nothing's basically it's just going to appear <laughs> pretty much so you can see it just turns off nothing's happening uh if i Go to appearing items, and I'm just going to make sure to turn zoom off as well. So now nothing's going to happen. They're just going to either turn off like that and turn on pretty much instantly. Close this down. I'm going to press save. And what I can do is right click on the scene and press filters. Press the plus sign and go up to move transition override. This is one that I find not a lot of people are using. And it is so powerful. It is going to save you so many resources because basically... I want now my uh, move transition to move this text up off screen, but I want it to move my camera to where I want it on my gaming scene. So I'm just going to press OK on here and I'm going to add my webcam to this scene just here. OK, so where is my webcam? Uh, in fact, what I could do video capture device add existing webcam just there. I'm going to resize it just to make sure it fits. There we go. So now I'm going to move it to, say, this this bottom middle section. Yeah. And I go back to this. You can see it zooms in, zooms down because it's a matched source. But that text is not doing anything, is it? So what I can actually do now is tell that text to do something when it's appearing and disappearing. So we, we created this move transition override. And we're going to select the source. It's going to be the text source that I'm going to be using. It can be absolutely any source. And we can scroll down to where it says appearing items. We can do delays so we can have it start later so it doesn't start transitioning the text in straight away. We can do change the easing, um, uh, the easing function, zoom, position. So as an example, when, when this appears, it's going to appear from the top, just there, like so. And we can also have it zoom in if we wanted to or whatever. Uh, with the disappearing, we're going to have it to disappear at the top. So, now, if I change to my gaming scene, you'll see the text disappears at the top. And it'll appear on the top like so. I can change that. So, if I turn that transition over right again and turn it off and show you what happens. Because we're not telling the text to do anything. So, even though the, the scene, uh, gaming scene, doesn't have the text on, it'll still transition it so if i turn that on so i don't have to kind of create multiple movements if i want something to just disappear off screen say if i want to change this again to we'll say the bottom left for some reason if i ever wanted to do that so when it disappears it's going to disappear to the bottom left like that so as you can see in the background it appears from the top and disappears down to the bottom left so you can get everything to move on its own you can add as many different source items as you want to do this with and it's so sleek and clean it just means that you can get something a bit more complicated as well uh, so i'm going to open up my other obs here and you see when i move to scene two and then move back as you saw in the example so the top bar and the bottom bar just here both go separate ways which is being done with this filter. So the top bar, move transition override. The appearing, when it's appearing, it's delayed by 70%. So if you see, it doesn't come in straight away. It waits for the screen to get there and then pop in afterwards. So you can change your delays whenever you want that to happen. Uh, we've got zoom turned off because I don't want it to zoom in or anything like that. I just want it to move in from, from the top. So the position is at the top. When it disappears, it, there's no zoom or anything that time and the position is the top and that is the same for the bottom but that the position is the bottom so it disappears out onto the bottom so if i turn both of those off for for example they would both kind of just swing out to the right because that's what its default set up as as you can see it comes in from the left 
goes out from the right. But if I turn both of these filters back on, you'll see. So it creates this dynamic effect. And you'll probably see this background screen um, fades in and out. And that, again, is using a move transition override. So if I go to scene and go to filters... Here, you can see, I've called it top bar, but if I turn that off now and change back, you'll see it just swipes out to the right-hand corner. And the way that I've created that effect, this little kind of fading as it transitions like so, is by going down to the appearing items and saying, I want it to stay in the center, but I want it to use a transition as well. So I want that to fade in. I could change it to something else if I wanted to, cut, sting a transition, anything that I want. I just liked the look of how it faded. And again, that's for disappearing. It stays in the center. And so it basically doesn't move from where it is and it just fades out. One other level you could do is maybe add zoom as well. Zoom can sometimes make it look quite cool. So if I do this, you'll see it zooms out and then it'll zoom in like so. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do by overriding each transition. I prefer it on none if I'm totally honest. So when I change between the two, like so. So many people have been asking how I create that transition whilst I'm live on stream. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Like I say, it does look really, really daunting when you first go in here and you see all these options that you can play around with. Just break it down into sections. So matched items, that is just if there is a scene and you've got the webcam on one and you've got the webcam on the other, that is a matched item. So how do you want that to move? It's the same again for if it's appearing. So it's not on the previous scene, but it's gonna be on the scene that you're moving to. How do you want it to appear? Same for disappearing. It's on the scene that you're on now, but it's not on the next scene. Where do you want it to go? What do you want it to do? You can override the curve and you can also get it to start a move filter if it's on there as well, if you've got different move filters. So you can start chaining things together. I told you this one was going to be a little bit dry. Hopefully it's made sense. I'm probably going to do some more videos surrounding this because I'm going to be creating more effects for uh, stream up and stuff like that. So hopefully it's going to gonna just improve your knowledge a little bit more and i'm going to break things down even further like this was kind of just an overview of how it works so it was just me kind of just chatting away uh, but hopefully it's made some kind of sense to you and it, it, you'll found it useful but start using that rather than using a ton of move because before when i was creating transitions i'd have my scene i'd be like right i want this to disappear that way this way uh, this image here to transition out this one do this and just using the override you can do all that without having to create a ton of different move filters at all it's so sleek so that's everything hopefully you guys have enjoyed it if you want to support me then consider joining patreon send me a coffee or joining the youtube membership just here these videos take me a long time to research and make all that jazz and i'll probably see you in the next one all right guys put your rock in the stone much love I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time and make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.